In today's video we will create this match display you can use for football matches or any other tournaments. We will start with a fusion composition which we will drag in our timeline and then we will head over to the fusion tab. In here I will open up the media pool and drag my two images of my flags into my node graph. Then let's zoom a little bit in and get our rectangle node. This rectangle node will be a mask for both of our flags. So let's connect it to both of them. If we click on one of them and then press one, we will have a display of it in the viewer. But as you can see, there's nothing here yet. And that's because we only have the second view displayed. So let's click on this little icon to show both viewers. And now you can see on the left side is our first viewer. The one on the right side is still black because we don't have anything connected to it. It's on this media out node. The little dot on the right side indicates that. So with the first viewer, we will change the rectangle so it matches our flags and we can expand the width and the height to one. Now I want to add a little bit of a corner radius. So let's take the corner radius slider and move it maybe to 0.3. If you want to see the other flag, you can click on the second node and hit one on your keyboard. And that's the second flag. Okay, now let's connect it to our main node tree, which will go into our media out. To do this, I will get a merge node and connect both of them to the merge node and then the output of the match node goes into the media out. Now, as you can see, we can only see one of the flags and that's the flag which is on top. And we want to scale them down. So let's move them a little bit to the back and add a transform node. A transform node controls the scale and the position. I've put it behind our first flag and now let's change the viewer to one. So we have it on this one. And let's scale it down to maybe 0.14. Let's click on this transform, hit copy with control C and paste it. Then we can connect it between the media two and the merge node by holding down shift and dragging it on top of the line. Like this, perfect. Now let's move the French flag to the left, uh, to the right and the German flag to the left. And let's add the score. For the score, we will need a text node. And to connect this text node, we will take a multi-match node, which we put between the match one node and the media out node. And then we will connect a text node to the multi-match node. Now let's type out the score on a text node. Let's say two to one and change the font to Montserrat black. Next, let's adjust the position of our flag. So it's equal like this. And now we will add another text node for the abbreviation of the country. So let's add a text node connected to the multi-merge, type out ger for Germany, and let's move it down here. Let's change it to Montserrat here and decrease the size. Now that we have it, maybe I will change it to lower caps. No, I will leave it at case. Okay, so, and now we need a, need the same thing for the French flag, but instead of just copying this node, we will press Control C, and then don't press Control V, but press Control Shift V. And what this does is it creates this instance node, which is linked to our first node. 
So if you change something in one of these nodes, it will get updated in the other node as well. And let's connect this to the multi-merge. And now it's still the same as the first node, so we can't see any difference because both of them are on top of each other. And the first thing we will do is on the instance text node, go to the inspector, right click this text field and press the instance. Now there's still everything linked, but this text field, this isn't linked anymore. So if you change this to friends, you can see it updated here on the text too. And because we don't want to have both of these texts on top of each other, we need to go to the layout and the instance the center. Now we can take the arrows and move it over here. And I need to change this to uppercase because I have it for Germany too, like this. Let's move this a little bit down and to German one too. Then I want to add a drop shadow to add some depth. So press shift A and search for the drop shadow and let's connect it behind the multi match. Now let's change the shadow strength, decrease it a little bit and increase the blur. What I also want to add is a little bit of glow on the score. So let's search for soft glow and our score text is this one. Usually it's good practice to name things. So let's rename this to score and this one is Germany. This one is France. Okay. Now take the soft glow and put it between the score and the multi match. And if you don't remember it, you need to hold down the shift key and then you can drag it on top of it. If this doesn't work for you, you can also use these connectors and just drag them onto each other. Now you can see the glow has been added to the score, but it's way too intense. So let's pull this down to maybe something about 0.5. Nice. Now I want to add a little bit of life to our score. So let's add a reflection on the German flag. To do this, I will first create the shape of the reflection. For this, we need a background node. Here we need to change the color to white. Then we need to get a rectangle node connected as a mask. And behind the background node, we will get a Gaussian blur node. Like this. Now let's click on the Gaussian blur and press one on our keyboard to make this visible on the left side. With the rectangle node, go to the inspector and change the width to something like this, for example, 0 0.024. You can leave the height or increase it. It doesn't really matter. What I also want to change is the angle. So right now we have this rectangle, which is basically vertical. And if we change the angle to something like minus 30 degrees, it looks like this. Now, we can't see it on the right side because we haven't connected it to our node tree. So let's get a merge node and put it behind this transform one. And now we can connect the Gaussian blur to this merge node. Now the reflection is visible on the right side, but there's still things to do. So first of all, I think it's still a little bit too big. So let's go back to the rectangle and decrease the width a little bit more. Yeah. Then we want to make it only visible on the German flag. And for this, we can use a mask 
The mask we will use will be the transform of our German flag. If you select it, you can see there's this border here around this. So if we take the output of the transform and put it in our merge as a mask, our reflection is gone. And if we take the rectangle node and move it over to the left, you can see it only affects the German flag. Now let's put it all the way on the left and let's go to frame 10 to animate it. What we need to animate is the center attribute. So let's make a keyframe by clicking on the little rectangle, then move the cursor maybe to frame 25. And now move it all over the German flag to the right side. If we play this back, you can already see the animation. So, but I'm still not finished. I will go to the merge node and here's this blend slider. With this blend slider, I can decrease the opacity of our reflection. We could basically drag it all the way down to zero and it isn't visible anymore. Or let's put it somewhere around 0.6. So it's 60% visible. And now our reflection looks like this. Perfect. Now the last thing we will do is we add a animation to fly in. Usually you would take a transform and then create keyframes to let it fly in. I have created is a little macro which is called fly in and let's put it on top of this and with this macro you can preview it. It flies. We have motion blur and we have all these controls and we can easily just drag this point to change the direction from where it flies in. So now it flies in from the bottom and I want to make it a little bit faster. So I'll just change the destination frame to 20. And yeah, I'm basically happy with this animation. This macro node will be part of a template pack I will release in the near future. And if you watch this video later, you will probably find a link in the video description. So after we have animated everything, I will go back to the edit page. And because this is black, I will add a background and drag it behind it. Sometimes it's helpful to darken the background a little bit. So let's hover over it, go to the color page and drag down the highlights. If you enjoyed this tutorial, feel free to watch another one and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.